You're awfully kind here. We gotta. Huh? Yeah. Is that okay? You don't mind this, do you? Which... No, and we've got one there in you case yours there. doesn't work right. It'll, Everybody's you can, bugged. Uh, you can get it from them. No, I just. Uh, I'm going off, uh, off a little later today, and I just wanted to uh, be sure we had uh, had this. And I've got a few minutes here. I tell you what, why this came up, I was fascinated. Way back when I read your book about the prominence of schools in that first part about Eureka and the teachers, you met uh, Mr. Fraser and Ms. Johnson and how that touched you because this education issue has come into focus and in fact the other day you were talking about science and how you had, uh, had been required to take it. I just thought it would be fascinating for a few minutes just to have you think back a little bit on your school system, those teachers, what they were like uh, both in grade school and and uh, college. Uh, school was terribly important in your in those early years in your community. Oh yes, I, I don't know whether how it is still to children today, but it was the major part of your growing up life. The center and, of that community. Uh, yes, a town of about ten thousand people then, twice as big now. But um, and it. Um, Everything about it, the whole atmosphere, the, the school spirit idea. Now, that might have been contributed to by the fact that I was a voracious reader and uh, I went to the public library about once a week and would take out a couple of books. And uh, so I went through uh, uh, all the books about Frank Merriwell at Yale and the Rover Boys and all the things, and you know, most of those. Uh, dealt with um, usually college experiences and athletics and so forth and the emphasis on dying for dear old Rutgers. And uh, you had a feeling then, uh, occasionally there was a, a teacher that the students didn't like or something, and not because the teacher was good or strict, but just simply because they weren't, they weren't cutting it. But basically you had a trust and faith that, uh, that the teachers, uh, a little bit like clergy, that it was a calling with them. And respected in the community. Yes, they were there because they wanted to, uh, to teach. And there was another thing that I wonder if it isn't, with all of our emphasis on uh, separation, church and state, which according to the constitutional precepts, I believe in. But I think that it has developed into, on the part of many people, uh, a separation of uh, not only state but people from religion. And I only say this in the context that you expected your teachers to uh, also talk in terms of moral precepts and precepts and what was right and wrong. Uh, you mentioned B.J. Fraser. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought of him as a kind of a new Type. He came as a young man in those first post-World War I days to high school as an English teacher. He became principal before I was out of high school. Oh, I see. He went right up. But he was, um, uh, but he also continued to teach. Mm -hmm. He was principal. And uh, as the English instructor, he was also then the director of the class plays. and. Uh, he was responsible for the formation of a drama club, which then also put on plays. Usually there were two plays a year, the junior class play and the senior class play. But uh, he created this other and, and it, it put on plays, including like an evening of a series of one act plays. But he was, uh, uh, he was one of the first teachers back in the days when yes, basics were stressed, but stressed to the point that, that um, if you were doing compositions, your composition would come back graded probably more on grammar and uh, spelling and punctuation and so forth uh, than it did on content. Well, he was kind of new in that he was stressing content. Uh, use your head, your imagination and so forth. And I developed a, a great taste for, for writing in those days because Usually the subjects that are given you require a lot of research and so forth. 
to find out facts, and then what you do is probably uh, you'd write an essay that was a, a digest of all the research that you'd done on, on something. And uh, I took him at his word, and I sometimes went way afield and uh, uh, did a humorous twist on what it was he'd asked for. And uh, I wasn't long in noticing that he'd have several of those read in class, and uh, I noticed that I was always called upon to read mine, and uh, maybe that's where the ham began in me, because uh, I would write with the idea in mind that I was going to have to read this aloud. I see. But well, uh, I got good grades, and I was in all those plays and so forth. That fellow touched you. Oh, yes. Fraser. I mean. And we stayed in contact, you might say by correspondence, uh, down through the years, and he only just recently died, still in that town. He had gone through the whole school system and, and uh, retired there when he... He enjoyed it, obviously, the whole matter of teaching. Much, and, yes. And I assume a lot of extra time. Yes. Um, I remember a great lesson I learned once when he told me about a student without naming him that he was making a point to me in the principal's office and that uh, this student was displaying hostility and he said to him, look, I don't care what you think of me now. I am interested in what you think of me 15 years from now. Mm. I gather, uh, Mr. President, you also had a, st uh, a strong urge from your family to learn uh, from your mother and father. Uh, again, I go back to this matter of the school being so central to a community, and it's the yes. way up. And oh, the parents, and it wasn't just mine. Parents felt that it was their duty, and uh, you had the feeling that the parents were on the side of the teachers, that they were the Parent Teachers Association really meant that they were associated. And uh, my mother and father, as was typical of their generation, and coming from uh, poor families, had never completed grade school. But that didn't stop them from uh, going on in their own lives, adult lives, uh, in reading and going on. My father um, started out in the shoe business, and well, ended up in the shoe business. But um, uh, he wasn't satisfied with just selling shoes. Uh, I remember him taking a correspondence course in literally, uh, I guess what would uh, be called orthopedics or something, he, uh, the study of the foot and all. And uh, he felt that it was his obligation not only to sell somebody a pair of shoes, but if they came limping in and had some kind of a foot problem, he ought to, yeah, he ought to know that. enough to be able to do something about it, and he did, and did very well. One, one other teacher that you mentioned was Ellen Marie Johnson, this yes. was Eureka, uh, yeah. who was the drama coach there. Yeah. It really seemed to me, you, if I read your book correctly, you got into it a good deal then at, uh, at college. Yes, um, she was again the English teacher, mm -hmm. and also then, uh, it just seemed to be traditional, I guess, in most of education, that they were the ones then who also uh, directed the plays, which was extracurricular activity. And uh, she was responsible for creating a drama club, and she directed the class plays, again the junior and the senior class plays, and again the drama club uh, put on plays. And in both of them, uh, B.J. Fraser and Ellen Marie Johnson. There was also a kind of a custom at that time that the college or the class play, high school or college, would be something that you would rent from, uh, you'd pay a, what, $15 royalty or something and you'd get the play from, oh, I see. Uh, you know, the script from, I think the company was called the French Company and they, they were in this business. But the plays that uh, I had remembered earlier from my younger days before, High school and college, where they'd usually get some play that would always have a comic character with a fright wig, and uh, <laughs> they weren't very class. And uh, 
it was B.J. that said that doing a play should be educational also. And so he reached out and, uh, as I say, I found myself playing a part in Philip Berry's play, You and I. Um, in college, the same thing. We did, uh, we did The Taming of the Shrew in modern costume. And it was Ellen Mary Johnson's idea. Um, also there, uh, I played Captain Stanhope in Journey's End. I had seen it once, a traveling company of English actors and doing Journey's End. And I never was so carried away in a theater in my life. I, I was in the war <laughs> as far as uh, that play was concerned. The curtain came down and uh, Captain Stanhope, of course, was the central role. And uh, sure enough, it came up. The only argument about it at the time was it was an all-male cast. <laughs> And that meant that in that particular play, none of the girls in the club could be involved. But uh, we did it, and most it was very successful. Did you have any struggles in your academic life or your school life from kindergarten on? Any particular subjects or any time in that where you had difficulty? Oh, yes. I School was not all that easy for me because uh, I was so interested in all these outside things, in addition to these things we're talking about. In high school, um, I was on the track team. I um, uh, and played football and started in basketball. And uh, my sophomore year, I made the, um, the um, uh, lightweight basketball team. That was... Um, mm -hmm. And then it uh, did reach a point where I couldn't do it all. And again, it was B.J. Frazier who was instrumental in convincing me. And uh, that was the only time I ever gave up anything athletic. I gave up basketball for, um, so that I could. Uh, that was the wrong season. That's when all the plays and everything took place, too. You say you had a conflict there. But, uh, yeah. How are your grades? Uh, I think... Uh, Average or, or above, sure. I was I was more concerned with uh, uh, remaining eligible. Of course, never had any problems about that. I stayed eligible for all those activities, but I was also I got good ones in the things I, I loved. That English, English. course, yeah. and I remember surprising myself uh, in mathematics. As a matter of fact, uh, in the algebra course, uh, the final exam, I got an absolute. Perfect 100. Not one. What, what year was that? In uh, high you school? Know, I, in high school. In high school, I see, one year. No. I, I, but then other things like uh, mentioning, as I have, science. Uh, and this is where those courses were valuable. I found out uh, that was not something I was interested in. You had to take it. And I took biology and I took physics. Mm -hmm. But uh, my attitude then was, I did what was required. <laughs> did you ever get an F? In anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not even a grade. I don't remember. No. Didn't have to uh, go to the woodshed with your no, father or anything no. like that. No. I had trouble in grade school with the diagramming of sentences on the blackboard, you know. The, um, but that trouble was because at that time I didn't know I couldn't see. Uh, and uh, so what was going on on the blackboard to me was a great mystery. But, you know, honestly, maybe the school nurses at that time weren't as serious as they are today. I discovered by accident, that's one of the reasons I love football and not, and at the time didn't play much baseball, when we'd choose upsides and play ball. I always kept my left foot kind of loose when I was at bat to get out of the way because I never saw the ball until it was about three feet from me. <laughs> and I didn't know that anyone else saw it differently. Football, however, that was different. Number one, you could see that ball was big enough and it didn't come as hard as a pitch. And uh, you were dealing with fellows at close hand. And so I fell in love with football very early. We lived above the high school athletic field on a knoll above the field. And every day home from school and down I went and I spent every minute, uh, both track season and football, watching the athletes out there and dreaming of someday being one of them. That I gather that was one of the real reasons you went to college, too. You said in your book that this fellow was one of the heroes. And of course, the mayor was. Yes. He was the son of the minister of our church. And he, uh, when I was a 
kid and he went to Eureka College and became big, he was a big football star in high school and we went to college there. Mr. President, we had the yeah. car away. Well, just one, very briefly, looking back I'm on... I'm having too much fun. On, on, on that experience, uh, that whole, those years from kindergarten right up till uh, out of college, uh, uh, a very gratifying one for you, oh, Yes, it? yes. And the bonds still remain and uh, my loyalty and feeling for that school, I think that most of the things that have happened in my life started there. Let me, if I could, just take one, the difference in a small school. To this day, uh, I am not a fan of the great universities. Sometimes I think they're assembly line diploma mills, and I don't mean to deprecate them, but when I think of the, this small college, it was everything that you'd ever read about. It was everything that you thought a college should be, believe it or not, from the ivy-covered walls in a small town where the college was the biggest industry of the town. But things like uh, the faculty members, that uh, if they wanted to go someplace, uh, they'd ask you uh, uh, to come over and watch their children. Babysit, well, you'd take your girl over. And the two of you'd sit there in front of the fire. Well, they would come home from whatever they were doing. And then you'd sit around with them. And that thing of older people, particularly faculty members, and uh, Maybe sometimes they'd, they'd invite a little group to come over and, and uh, you'd sit around and, and discuss things and, and uh, argue and talk and there was as much of college there as there was in the classroom. There was a professor, we called him Daddy Gray. Uh, he was, my major was economics and sociology. He was the chief professor and uh, he was a great professor. He, he judged you individually, not as a group. And I remember once when I got a better grade than my, well, as good a grade, I should say, as my brother did. It was in the same class. My brother was older than I was. And my brother protested to him. He said, come on. He said, I know how much studying I did. And he said, I know how much, how much less studying my brother did. And he said, that, and the professor's explanation, he said, well, Neil, you've talked about studying law. And therefore, he said, what you're learning in this class is going to be very important to you if you pursue that. But he said, your brother, he just wants a diploma. He said, I doubt that he's ever going to use really technically what he's learning in this class. And he said, why should I set him back <laughs> in his pursuit of that diploma? <laughs> I see, I must see. But it was small community, manageable, wasn't it? Very oh, yes. personal. And, uh, the size of it, yeah. and they took care of their own. Right? Yes, and you, can't, and you can't hide in a small school. I see. Uh, everyone, uh, there isn't anyone that can just, as they can in a university, just uh, go to class, back, study, go and graduate. In a small school, everyone's got to participate, mm -hmm. whether it's the drama club or whether it's student politics or, uh, or student government, I should say, or uh, any of those things. Uh, Students that never maybe came there from high schools and you'd see them and never thought that they had anything uh, outside of just the study. And pretty soon they're drafted into doing things simply because of the need of, yeah. of this in the small school. Yeah. Well, great. I think your time's up. <laughs> okay. You're running out. That's terrific. I, uh, it's precisely what I just wanted. I'm when you took the required courses. Mm -hmm. And here and there, there were selectives then that you could take mm -hmm. on your own. But the thing, as I saw it, was it was the required courses that really gave you that broad span and also led you to begin to think of, of uh, what you wanted to do. Uh, I knew kids that I, you could see them in their first class in physics, and you knew that that was going to be the direction that they went. Mr. President, terrific.